Hello everybody and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video and yes we are going to land this beast on the moon. It's a 200 ton, well you could call it a cruiser, you could call it a corvette, I like to call it a corvette because my cruisers are usually even bigger than this small tiny little thing here. And you know I got thinking because usually the way you go about those spacecraft is you build an interplanetary transfer ship, then you build a lander, you get to the planet where you want to go, you land the lander, then you get back up into orbit, rendezvous with your cruiser and then get on with it. But I thought, well, why not skip some of those steps and just make one humongously great craft that can land and also do the interplanetary transfers. So this is what I came up with and well it's a little bit on the heavier side for a lander with 200 tons so I decided to not use landing legs but some girders because I've heard somewhere that they uh, kind of provide better support and don't wiggle around as much as the landing legs with such heavy craft. And here we're trying to get down on the surface. Uh, if you may have noticed, I have reduced the thrust output of the four skipper engines, which uh, actually provide the lift capabilities for this beast, because Minmus, uh, no, Min, not of course, Minmus, the moon, does not have that high of a gravity. And so we're slowly uh, descending onto the surface. Thankfully we have a flat patch of surface so we can land without much of the incidents. Got some landing lights so I can see where I'm touching down. Reducing the speed and the throttle and touchdown. Well, kind of. Yes, there it is. We've landed the Stingray on the moon. And so, what should we do next? What should our brave pilot do? Well, of course, we could extend our communications array, which uh, have, has been protected by the cargo base. We can extend our solar panels. And, of course, we could take a little walk outside on the surface. But in order to do that, we have to get out of the airlock. Yes, this is once more one of my creations where I built an interior for my spaceship. You may remember my gigantic cruiser which uh, almost broke the game because it had so many parts. Well, this takes the same idea and kind of shrinks it down a bit. You have crew quarters for, well, 16 Kerbals. You have your science lab and you have some a science deck as well, which we'll get to in a minute, as soon as our little Kerbal manages to get up the ladder and into the science lab, which also acts as some kind of a bulkhead, because it put it square in the middle of the cargo bay, which acts, of course, as the hull for our spaceship. And... Here we go on the other side, and where is the pilot? You did see him on the ladder and get inside the science bay, did you not? Where did he go? Did he, did he go to sleep in one of the crew containers? Where is he? There he is! Ah, lazy bastard! But so we just transfer him to our science lab and get him out on the underside so I can show you the science and engineering bay. Just trying to get my bearings. There you go. Get out. If you listen to this squad, please make some kind of internal view for the science lab so we can get uh, EVA buttons on the face of the Kerbal instead of just clicking on the containers. And here we have our science bay with materials bay mystery goo, atmospheric sensors, and all the other stuff that you need to gather delicious science. So, time to get out. In order to do that, 
we go out the airlock. And of course, instead of having real airlocks, which we don't in this uh, uh, in this video game, I'm just using the Mark I lander cans because they can be put inside the spaceship very easily and don't take so much space or weight. Just opening up the cargo base. There we go. And they also act as some kind of, well, surrogate landing legs, so to speak. There we go. Get out. Just for a little photo op. We have to commemorate this occasion for the first successful extra Kerbal Kerbin, Erkstar Kerbinal landing. How do you call it if a craft lands the first time not on Kerbin but another planet? It can't be extraterrestrial because it's not really Terra. But here we go for a little stroll. Checking the outside. No damage whatsoever because we were spot on with our landing. So it's time to get back and get this thing off of the moon. And yes, we have enough Delta V to manage it, not, uh, not only to get back up into orbit of the moon, but also to get back into Kerbin orbit. Yes, now that is a beautiful sight, isn't it? It's getting my bearings. Nope, that was a little too far. I want to do an equatorial orbit. Let's control it from the cockpit, shall we? It's ascending slowly with minimal thrust. Oh, it's easy on the moon, honestly, because the gravity is so low. So we can already fire our nuclear engines, which usually are just used for interplanetary transfer, but since the gravity on the moon is so low, uh, they already provide a thrust to weight ratio greater than one, and we can reach orbit. So there we go, firing up the engines. And then it is time to head up, back up into the vast blackness of space. And there we are, in a stable orbit around the moon. So, where else could we take this little uh, landing craft of ours? Yes, Duna, why not? And here you see me desperately trying to get this thing to land. Uh, since Duna has an atmosphere and also higher gravity, this is not as easy as landing it on the moon or uh, other similar planetoids or moons. And as you may see, the indicator, the thrust indicator is really moving everywhere. Honestly, if it wasn't for tech fuel balancer, I would not be able to hold this thing steady at all. Because even though I designed it quite symmetrically, whoops, whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 don't crash, please don't. Please don't crash. You already crashed 50,000 times or so. Please don't crash this time. Nope. You may gather from my attempt here that it is not so easy to get this thing down, especially if you already had it on an inclination. But here we go. Touching down and... Yep. That's parked. That is parked. Nope. Don't, 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 don't. Yes, there you go. As I mentioned before, I tried to set this up uh, symmetrically regarding weight. Uh, but unfortunately, the tanks don't drain evenly and therefore it's a little bit of a problem with the out-tech fuel balancer. And if you remember, we did not have anything in this cargo base when we... Uh, came back from the moon, but now we do. 
And those are quite interesting little vehicles. So, what are they for? Uh, you know, since I thought, well, rovers are kind of boring and also they are not able to get back into the cargo bay because of that uh, huge space, I made an iron bike or something like that, a kind of hovercraft on iron engines. So it's just four iron engines with a science package in between and a command seat in front. So we can just explore the surface without any wheels or any problems on the floor hindering us moving along. This thing has thousands meters per second of delta V because it has enough xenon tanks. Unfortunately, I forgot to put more solar panels on it, so we have to take a few breaks here and there to get uh, our electricity back up. So, not so much of a great exploratory vehicle, but a fun little creation nonetheless. And here we're trying to get back into our Stingray craft so we can take back off from Duna and maybe back to Kerbin. So just taking up more juice, getting back into the cargo bay, folding up the solar panels so it does not get crushed. So I'm now just on the rest electricity. Yeah, and it's not so easy getting in, actually. Not as easy as I imagined. Uh, there we go. Now we just have to dock with it. Looking good. And, 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 I think we can make this. I really think we did. Yes, we are docked. So now we got our explorers back into the Stingray. It is time to get back off of the surface. And for some odd reason, when I exited the command seat, the Kerbal ended up on the roof. Hmm, curious. So time to close this up and get back out onto uh, into orbit. Tech fuel balancer once again helping me with this and firing up the engines. Uh, okay. Hmm. That was unexpected. So, after some trial and error, I found out that apparently with those uh, ion bikes on board, for some odd reason, the thing completely disintegrates at uh, the slightest implementation of thrust. So I unloaded them, unfortunately had to unload them, and got into the atmosphere with the massive skipper engines providing enough thrust to get up onto the surface, uh, off of the surface of course. So, thrust to weight ratio not yet there, so I can use the nuclear engines. So, I have to keep using the skippers. Looks a little bit weird, and thankfully, Duna's atmosphere is not as thick as some of the other planets, so it's not that much of a problem when I put the spacecraft square into the middle of the flight path. But nevertheless, we managed to get our orbit around Duna, or at least an apolapse high enough so we can attempt circularization. And of course, now we're back on, on the nuclear engines, um, which not only look cool placed as they are, but also uh, since they weigh a lot, I tried to put them in the center of the spacecraft so they, the center of mass stays in the middle. Uh, even as the fuel tanks are drained. But, as I mentioned before, without tech fuel imbalancer, it's really hard to get this thing landing properly. And that's it! We're in a safe orbit around Tina. Well, almost, but we have enough delta V left. 
And we can manage this burn no problem. And still have enough left to make it back to Kerbin. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.